Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's nice to be in one of God's many living rooms. <laughs> There's a bunch of churches today that are open and his children are getting getting together to to a fellowship. And uh, we really enjoy our, our time. Uh, we call it halftime, but <laughs> where we can get up and greet each other because you know, usually we, we leave from here and we don't see each other that much during the week, you know, so it's nice to get together once a week and enjoy the, the live music, you know, that's something special about having live music, you know, to be able to worship God with uh, stringed instruments and it's a, it's a good time. God is so good to us. We celebrate Him. Amen. Well, in this life, you know, there are uh, issues that we face and uh, some of them become struggles. And some of them sometimes turn into situations that are that are really uh, critical to us, and and could uh, could change the course of our future sometimes. And 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 sometimes we don't have the answers. It seems like most of the time, huh? <laughs> we just don't know what choice to make and what decision to make to help us get through these times. Well, praise God, we don't have to always know, because we can trust our God. He is with us. He does not leave us, does never, never forsake us. He can be counted on 100%. Uh, last week we asked the question about, you know, who, who can we trust the media 100%, you know? <laughs> and then I, right after that I said, uh, well, we can't even trust ourselves 100% because we fail ourselves so many times, you know. But God can be trusted 100%. And that's where our faith Gets, it gets involved with, uh, with the principles of God. And uh, when we can put our faith 100% on God, wow, that is powerful. Nothing can move us. No matter what goes on around us, nothing can move us when our faith, our 100% focus is on Him. And uh, mountains will move. Amen. When we get to that point, Things will happen, dramatic things will happen, things that we can't contemplate in our own mind. God will move on our behalf, you know. It is amazing what God would do when we put our trust and our confidence in Him, and we can. So if you have your Bibles with you today, we'll be talking about this. And this is in Psalms chapter 23. Psalms chapter 23. I'm going to read the whole chapter, it's not, not very long. Psalms chapter 23, the psalm of the divine shepherd, it says here, the psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall, flow, shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Praise God. You know, this is amazing what God has given us. We can have confidence in Him. We can put our trust in Him. And it, even though we come to a place in life from time to time where it feels like we're in a, an impossible situation, uh, things are going wrong, there's family situations, there's uh, job situations, career changes, you know, moving your kid from one school to another. <laughs> a lot of complications in life that, that challenge us and that could very well become struggles. Yes. And they weigh heavy on us. And, uh, and God promises that He'll be with us every step of the way. Yes. And then sometimes they get very, very dramatic. A uh, health issue that goes way out of bounds and way out of whack, you know, and things are bad. The doctors are saying things that uh, sound very, very critical, you know. And we're wondering, wow, this is, this, is, this is tough. And we get to a place where we're thinking, man, this is just too tough. I don't know if I can make it. Anybody ever been there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we get to places like that sometimes in life, you know, and, and praise God that we have 
a father that we can turn to. And no matter how rough things get, no matter what the struggles bring our way, He's going to be with us. Amen. And you know, uh, we've been talking a lot about this recently because, you know, we do have a, you know, election coming up and there's a lot of news in the air today and we're being told this and told that and it's getting, we see riots happening in different cities and uh, we see uh, wildfires. Does that smoke out there bothering anybody? It's sure bothering me with my, <laughs> my sinuses. It's just like every morning, like, my sinuses hurt because of the smoke that's in the air. And that's coming all the way from California. That is amazing. You know, uh, a plume cloud, you can see it on the satellite. It's kind of going a little bit around Arizona because of that high right there, but it goes all across the top of the United States and all the way across the bottom of the United States. And we're, we're seeing that. And it's, it's, uh, we're seeing some pretty strange things, and, and some are very uh, dramatic. Uh, some people are dying because of the, the protest, you know. Uh, policemen are, are being shot and killed with, with no, no confrontation thing. I mean, not a, a wrestling match or fighting over some drugs or anything like that. You know? They're just walking up straight up and trying to assassinate police officers, you know. And I, I've never seen that happen in my day and time as growing up in here in the United States, you know. It just seemed like there was a lot more respect back then for the, the law enforcement. And, and we're starting to lose that, so our nation is struggling. So we can kind of understand that our personal struggles, God has helped us with those. He's never left us, never forsake us. Well, I guarantee you that God's uh, got his eye on America and that he founded America for, for a very special purpose. And we have been fulfilling that purpose very faithfully as Christians. We have uh, committed ourselves to reach this entire planet with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And because we have continued in that steadfastly throughout all these years, I believe God's going to honor that. And we're going to get through this time. We're going to get to the other side, and our nation is going to be uh, uh, restored, just like what we've been praying about. The, the Bible says, well, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then we will hear from heaven. We are hearing from heaven. God is involved. We may not see the works of God uh, out in the public arena, because you, you can't hardly get the media to cover anything good. They, they love the bad stuff. I guess that sells. I don't know what it is, but, but we, can't get, we can't get none of the good stuff on there. But God is doing some good things, and He is reaching some people uh, that we thought couldn't be reached. So God's love is being poured out on mankind right now. His Spirit is being poured out on mankind. And uh, so the struggle that we're facing as a nation, it's going to be behind us pretty soon. We know the election is going to stop, so <laughs> most of the madness will stop there. That happens every four years. But... Uh, hopefully the rioting and all that too is going to dwindle away. And who's ready for the virus to be gone? Anybody? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would love to see that thing just wiped out and just cease to exist any longer, you know. Praise God, that'd be great. And uh, I heard one prophet say that that's exactly what God's going to do. He's going to, he's going to move it off the front pages and, and off, out of our lives, and, uh, and he's going to provide more health to his people. So praise God. Looking forward to those good times says here, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Our Father is with us every step of the way. So no matter what challenge in life that we may face, we can put our trust and confidence in Him. And the way we can, I know it's a, a little bit odd for us as human beings because we're so... Uh, so tied to physical relation. Uh, we're tied to what we see with our eyes. And so what we see with our eyes, we tend to believe real easy because we saw it. If we touch it, we say, hey, that's a microphone stand right there. I believe it's a microphone stand. See, it's got a knob right here, just right here. You know? <laughs> we can see it, we feel it, we touch it, we believe it, and we grasp it. You know? And in our relationships, we see our loved ones. You know, so we know, hey, we got a relationship going on here, you know. And, uh, but with God, it's a little bit different, huh? It is a little bit different. God is challenging us to have a relationship with Him without Him being physically present where we can see Him with our own eyes, where we can reach out and give Him a hug. 
there is a little bit of distance and you know a lot of people ask why why does God choose to be distant from us you know well number one he has to because of our sinful nature it's not his fault that's our fault we have a tendency to be involved in sin and our holy God is not going to be in the presence of sin right now in heaven there is no sin so he lives in that kind of environment. So that's why we can't be in the presence of a holy God. If we were in the presence of a holy God in this sinful nature, in this sinful body, you know, we would melt in his presence, we'd die. Remember the story of the, the priest, the high priest? How he would go into the holy of holies? And they would tie a rope around his foot? That's kind of scary. He would have to go into the Holy of Holies all by himself and make an offering and a sacrifice and burn incense and do whatever he had to do in there. And uh, he had to go in there with the right heart, with the right mind and the right attitude because if he messed up and he fell over dead, which was the, the, the thinking, they might fall over dead. If he's hiding sin and he hadn't confessed, he could die in there and the rest of the guys are going to pull him out. <laughs> They're not going in after him. They're not calling 911 and <laughs> going in for him. No, they were going to pull him out of there. You know, That's how critical it was. That's how holy and pure our Father is. And he's going to maintain that purity. It's not going to, it's not going to allow a sinful man to, to be in, in that presence. So how does God reach us then? Thank God he found a way. He already knew from the beginning. He knew that he was going to make a way. And that's why he sent his son Jesus Christ. He sent his son in the same flesh that we bear. He came the same exact way. He was, he was a little bitty two cells at the very beginning, like where we started, you know, the two cells. And then they started multiplying, multiplying, multiplying. Next thing you know, it's time for Mary to give birth, and here comes Jesus. The same way we came. He came the exact same way. I sometimes have a hard time thinking like that because you, you think of Jesus, he's a holy man, he's righteous and all that, and you just think, bam, he just showed up. No, he went through the birth canal. He went through the, the, the teething pains. He went, he went through the, the, all them years of being raised in a, in a family and the, the father and the mother uh, disciplining and training him and all those things. You know, He went through everything like that. So God found a way to make contact with us in a human form. Jesus. Amen. And he came bringing the good news of the kingdom. He brought that news into this lost and dying world that, that tells us and, and gives us hope that we can come in contact with our Holy Father. We have contact with him through the Son. Remember what Jesus said? No man comes unto the Father except through me. Jesus made the way. So now we have access to the throne room of God. We can now come boldly into the throne room of God because of what Jesus has come, has done for us. Now, it doesn't happen physically yet, right? We're still not physically in the presence of our God. When we pray, we can access heaven, and our spirit can access the Father. He hears our every prayer. So we have that access that way. But there's coming a time where we're going to see God face to face. Because somewhere down the line, in the process that God is working right now, He's going to get humanity to a place where we can walk in the holiness of God. We're not there yet. So in the meantime, He gave us Jesus to make the way. And then, right after that, Jesus said, The Father is going to give you a helper, a comforter. Amen. Who is that? Anybody know? The Holy Spirit. You see what God has done? God has made a way for simple human beings like us that sometimes fall into sin, you know, that, that disqualifies us from being in heaven because we sometimes make mistakes, you know, and we we're, we're, have a tendency to get involved in sin. So God made a way through the Son first, and then He gave us the Comforter, the Holy Spirit of God. When we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, God put a seal upon us. And that seal is the Holy Spirit. That seal says, you belong to me and I belong to you. 
I am your father. You're my child. That's the seal that the Holy Spirit uh, has, has put upon us so that we belong to Him. So now we have the Holy Spirit living within us. Part of God has been planted inside of us. And this shouldn't be a very strange uh, uh, thing to us because I think any of us can, uh, can recognize that we have some attributes and traits of our parents. I remember that, I've said this before in church, but I remember one time, I think we were in England at the time, and I was there getting ready for work, you know, and, and I was shaving, and I, I just happened, I looked up in the mirror like that, and for the first time in my life, I saw my dad. That was the most awkward thing to me, you know, to think of, I was, wow. I looked and I, I kind of got shocked. I saw my dad in the mirror, you know, and it was me, you know, because I looked like my dad, you know. I got his attributes, you know. And so, so we can relate to that. God has planted in us his attributes. We are living them out. God has planted his, even, it's even stronger than blood. It is life-producing spirit of God. The breath of life has been planted into us. And now we walk with our God every day. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. Even while we're making mistakes, when we're making bad choices, we're getting judgmental, we, we may gossip, we may uh, corrupt communication, may slip out, you know. Uh, doesn't happen to none of y'all, right? Just, just me. <laughs> yeah, it happens. You know? And then praise God, the Holy Spirit's right there. What does the Holy Spirit do? Say, whoa! <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not good. That is not good. So we're convicted right away. And then what do we do? Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. I made a mistake. Again, you know. And God says, oh, I'm going to wipe that clean. Jesus paid the price for that sin right there. Son, daughter, do not carry that burden. Do not carry that shame. It doesn't belong to you. Jesus paid the price. It has been satisfied. Nobody is writing it down and keeping track of your mistake. It's been forgiven. Matter of fact, the Father said that He takes our sin and casts it into the sea of forgetfulness, never to be remembered again. See? Man, God is good. He has found a way that we can walk together with our God. So no matter what life brings our way, whatever challenges we face, He's right there with us. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. We don't have to fear. If God is for us, anybody? Who can be against us? God is for us. Look how much He's for us. He sent Jesus. He made the way. He gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit to seal us. We're His. This world can't take, take us away. The things the, of this world are starting to fall by the wayside and it doesn't have that draw that it used to have. Now, the Holy Spirit draws us closer to the Father. Yeah. yeah, God is good. And He's with us every step of the way. He will not leave us. Uh, I want to get this scripture in here too. In 1 John chapter 5. 1 John, or little John, way back here by Peter. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. He says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Wow. We just sang it a while ago. Overcomers. So whatever challenges and struggles life brings our way, we're going to get over it. It is not going to hold us down. Even to the point of death. Death can't even stop us. Now that's amazing right there. Because from our human perspective, we think death, well that's the end. It's over. Just a memory now. No. No. <laughs> That is not true. We have overcome death. When we die, it's like we close our eyes and our next 
moment that we open our eyes, we're in the presence of God. So even death cannot st stop us. We're going to overcome it all. God has planned for us to live into eternity with Him. We're going to overcome death. Praise God. God is so good to us. Yeah. So no matter what comes our way, keep our faith in our God. Our trust and our reliance on Him is going to see us through. It's going to work. And I'm going to prove it. Right now in church, I'm going to prove it that it works. Now you just think in your own mind here for just a moment. Have you ever been sick? Have you ever had a financial struggle? Have you ever had a relational issue that was really bad? Have you ever gone through anything like that in life? Yeah. Now think about how far back it was. It's a year? Anybody? Two years? Ten years? I can remember stuff way back there. I got to dig pretty deep. 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years ago. Yeah. We're not there. Where are you at now? That issue has been overcome. That struggle has been overcome. We're here today. We overcame all those things. So our confidence should be great. We believed God way back there, and He got us through it. And here we are today in His presence. So we shall overcome. There is no struggle. There is no situation, even to the point of death, that cannot stop us from overcoming. We belong to God. Whoever, who is He who overcomes the world, but He who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Do you believe Jesus is the Son of God? Have you put your trust and confidence in that fact? Have you, have you uh, uh, given your will over to a loving Father and, and uh, expressed your commitment to Him? Yes, that's us. We overcome. We are the overcomers. And nothing's going to hold us back. Praise God. We are going to face every challenge and we're going we're gonna to ride over the top and overcome. Now, just a little bit, we got a couple minutes. Uh, one other scripture, Romans chapter 12, verse 17, real quick here. And this is a little tool for us to use as we overcome. Because more challenges are coming. There's going to be people that are going to uh, challenge you in your faith. They might even be your problem. <laughs> they might try to be a problem to you and get you off track. Let's see, what did I say? Romans 12, verse 17. And this is a good tool to use. Praise God. 12, 17. He says, Repay no evil for evil. Now, our human nature, we like to get even, don't we? You know, they do me wrong, I'm going to do them wrong. That's not, God said, don't do that. Don't repay evil for evil. Because what do you get? Evil plus evil equals evil. Yeah, more evil. So we don't do that. Have regard for good things. In the sight of all men. Find something good. We should teach the disciples in a program to uh, try to change their, their vision. Because, you know, drugs and alcohol, man, you get pretty negative in life. I mean, you're looking at things, everything's bad. Everything's just terrible. I said, no, you got to change that. you got to see things in a better light. There are some good things going on in the world. And the, the more you see it good, the more good is going to be for you. So... So we get them to change their vision. We need to keep our vision on the good things. He said, if it is possible, as much as depends on you, live, live peaceably with all men. Mm -hmm. God is telling us, you make the effort mm -hmm. not to be judgmental, not to be unforgiving. You make the effort to try to live peaceably among <coughs> all men. Now some, some on the other side may not accept that, but you, what you have control of, don't hold on to those grudges. Don't, don't be mad at other people. You know, forgive them and let it go. You know? If they don't let it go, that's on them. But do your part. He says, Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. See how our faith can work here? We can put our trust in God that He's got things under control. So if someone is bringing a conflict into our lives, we can just say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. We can pray. 
and put it in God's hands. Therefore, if your enemy hungers, feed him. If he thirsts, give him a drink. Do you have any enemies? Well, wait a while, you might get one or two. <laughs> yeah, some people just don't like you for some reason, you know. They just don't like me for some reason. I don't know the exact reason, but it's going to happen. But he says, he says, if they're hungry, feed them. If they're thirsty, give them a drink. For in so, in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on their head. So we can get a little bit of something out of it there too, that if we're being good to them and they reject it, well, they're being convicted. They're being convicted of the wrong thing that they're doing. And hopefully there's room for change there. We never know what's going to happen. But he says here, we're like planting good seeds by doing the right thing into a person's life. And finally he says, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. That's how we win. That's how we overcome. We stay on the right side. We do the right thing. We ask the Father, Father, what should I do here? And He's going to show you. He'll bring scriptures to your remembrance. He'll, he'll show you what the right thing is to do at that moment. And then you will overcome evil. Praise God. So, rest assured, God is for us. And the forces that are against God are against us because we're His children. But they're not going to hold us back. We are going to overcome. That's what God has given us. Let's pray. Father, we love you so much. We thank you for your goodness and your grace. And we thank you, Lord God, for uh, the words of encouragement that you give us. Uh, Father, we do face many different challenges. Some are not so big, but others get real big, Father. And, and we can look into our past and recognize that your hand was working for us. Even though the challenge was so great, Father God, you helped us to overcome. And then all the little things we deal on on a daily basis, Father, we can see your handiwork there too. You helped us to make good decisions. You helped us to do the right thing and, and not to repay evil for, uh, with evil, but to, but to do good, Father God, in the presence of evil even. Thank you, Father God, for helping us to be the overcomers that we are. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise, Father. This is a good life that you've given us. When we're at peace with ourselves and at peace with others, Father, this is a great life. Thank you for the peace that you give us. We love you so much, Father. We recommit ourselves to be uh, the, the light of the world, shining into the darkness, Father, committed to do the right thing and to plant good wherever we can. We aim to honor you, Lord, with our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say it. Amen. 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 We are dismissed.